Hi there, Viper here, you all right? Um, so I'm just here just to do a um, quick review of the uh, Speedel CL876 uh, motorcycle head unit, uh, which you can see here fitted to my bike. So yeah, so I'll just give you a quick view uh, or overview of what's in the uh, what's in the box when it comes. Um, so you obviously get the head unit that's here. This is a you know, fairly wide screen. Um, it's uh, yeah, not square like some of the other ones that we've seen. Uh, you also get the remote control, as you can see there, mounted there. Uh, it also comes with all the wiring. Um, the wiring really, to be honest, is really self-explanatory. Um, as you can probably see through here, through the screen, all the cables are labeled. So it's wired remote. Uh, there should be one for the power, rear cam, front cam. Uh, and there's also an extra auxiliary one there where you can plug an external speaker in. So the head unit itself comes fully sealed. Um, so it's got a uh, slot underneath where the, uh, the uh, SD card goes um, and it comes with a 64 gig SD card installed. Uh, it also comes with this mount, as you can see there, like a ball mount, so it's easily um, adjustable to whatever position you want it. And this is perfect on the bar that I already had for my, uh, my phone mount. Um, so it's literally just one Torx key and then you can move it about as you want. Um, so all the cables are sort of short coming out the back and then you have to obviously route the cables as you want them. Um, across the bike and to be honest that was the that was the hardest bit trying to work out exactly where I was going to route the cables um, the cables were obvious of which ones connected to each other so they're all labeled no problem at all um, so what also comes in the box is you have these cameras 1080p cameras um, so they come with mounts so you can screw them into whatever you're mounting on um, I've used the sticky pads because it's easy they fix on there really strong and obviously you can loosen the collar and obviously turn the camera to whichever way you want it to uh, to go. So the front one I've mounted on the front mudguard facing forward and the rear one uh, I managed to find a place uh, just next to the rear light there so a flat surface that I could stick it to and then obviously I had to rotate the camera so that the uh, the uh, the view was straight up uh, so what else it comes with? It also comes with TPMS sensors, um, which you screw onto your valve. So the front one is there, as you can see. So it comes with a little brass nut, which you screw onto the valve first. Then you screw the TPMS sensor onto it and then snug up the, uh, the nut to it to hold it secure. Uh, it comes with batteries fitted in the TPMS sensors. Um, and it also comes with spare batteries in the box as well. So wiring wise, I did have to put a hard mount into the, uh, or a hard wire into the electric, electrics on the bike. So I've wired all of mine in, you can see all this <laughs> excess cable. So that's the cable there for the rear camera, which I've routed through and then joined up with the extension piece that comes with it. And then I've put a piggyback fuse into the fuse box, um, just cut a little notch in it to give it clearance. And then, so you effectively have one wire, the black one that goes to earth, uh, yellow one which goes to positive, and then the red one which goes into a switched um, ignition feed. So effectively, it turns on and off 
uh, when you turn the bike on and off. So I routed all the cables behind the panels and then through and across the headstock and then they're all in the uh, in the back of the clocks there. So let's just turn it on and we can see what happens. So ignition on, excuse the noise, that'll be the fuse pump and then you'll see that the head unit should come up. There you go, speed it up. So there you go. So you've got on here, you've got your front and rear tire pressures. Uh, which hopefully you can see there. Uh, mine are reading a bit high actually, I need to uh, adjust them before we go out of the weekend. Uh, you've also got a choice of Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. I'm going to use Android Auto on this one. Uh, you've got the ability to adjust the volume coming out. Obviously settings where you can set things around the camera. And there you go, it's going to kick straight into Android Auto by the looks of it. Because it's connected to my phone. And you can see it's fired up Google Maps and Spotify. So I can also go straight into Spotify on the touch screen. And I can split the view that I've got. I can pick to use my phone. So effectively all the apps that I've got on my phone will come through onto there and obviously it shows who I've rang as well. Go back to home. So DVR. So as you can see there, I've got front and rear cameras. Um, really good quality. Actually, the phone doesn't pick them up as, as well as they look in real life. So yeah, so that's effectively it. So like I said, I've got Android Auto on my phone, so it connects automatically to that. Um, Anything from the sat-nav plays through it. I've connected my Cardo uh, pack talk up to it via Bluetooth. And then obviously you've got the choice of whether you connect your phone via Bluetooth. Um, so I've tried it. I mean, the sound is really good. But we did try it on a phone call and it was a, a bit iffy. So it's probably recommended that you connect your Cardo to your phone. Um, and then obviously Bluetooth your phone to the head unit in order to use things like maps and to do the mirroring. So. But all in all, it works really well. Um, so I haven't actually tried it out on the road yet, um, but all the functionality, maps, uh, uh, Spotify, etc., is absolutely spot on. So yeah, I'm looking forward to uh, seeing what it's like in, in real life um, and seeing what the sort of the screen quality is like when you're riding along. Um, may have to adjust the position of the screen, so it depends whether it gets in the way of, uh, of when I'm riding and obviously sort of the vision through the, uh, through the screen. But yeah all in all really pleased with it um didn't really have any issues like say with the with the wirings all self-explanatory all labeled all color coded um like i say the biggest problem was working out exactly how to route the wires um everything worked exactly as it does um it doesn't come with any instructions in the box however if you go onto their website on uh, speedle.cc um, and put in the model number of the uh, of the head unit um, it gives you PDF instructions. They're really easy to follow. Um, the only feedback that I'd have on the instructions is it doesn't include anything in the instruction manual about what the buttons do um, on the remote control. Um, however, if you look on their website, there is actually a section on the CL876 uh, where it shows on their main website that button A is effectively to um, answer a call when there's an incoming call, button B is to, to, to hang it up, etc. But yeah, so that could have probably been better included in the instruction manual, but other than that, it's spot on. Uh, there you go, it's already given me a warning that my tire pressure is too high. Um, so you can set the limits for your tire pressure so as to when the alarms go off. Um, so yes, I certainly need to let them down before I uh, take it out for a ride this weekend. Let me see if I can get that a bit better. There you go, abnormal tire pressure, I think it's 47.8 PSI. So all good. So yeah, so looking forward to uh, using this at the weekend and using the maps functionality. Um, and obviously like I say, uh, yeah, seeing how the screen looks um, in real life. But yeah, other than that, I'm, I'm really impressed. You know, it's a, it's a nice screen aesthetic. It's a big wide screen. Um, so yeah, I don't think it'll give any issues at all. So thanks for listening and uh, hope you, uh, you hope you enjoyed that. Cheers, bye bye.